Thank you very much. So as you can see, a lot of the machinery that we have on here is emitting data. And so we want to talk about today is about that value of data collaboration. You know, having your cake and eating it too. My name is Jason, Senior Manager for Data Solutions. And today I have with me. Um, so Simon Van Wiegen, I'm the Product Manager for Data Solutions. I work for Modular Mining Systems, but I am part of the Data Solutions team uh, alongside my colleague Jason. So we'll be contributing to the conversation today. Some food for thought. Really, what, is, uh, what prevents people from collaborating, as we were talking earlier? Um, what do we have competing goals? Do we really have those competing goals in the industry? What do we get out of collaborating? Can we change the perception of collaboration? And that's really when we get into this data, we get focus and tunnel vision on what you see and what you think you see. An example here is an A-B test. As you can see on the board here, there's a checkers. There's a color for A and a color for B. If you look at this closely and stare at it, you would say that those are different colors. But when I introduce more information and more as like collaboration, it starts to bring in a new perspective that they're actually the same exact color. And the one thing we can agree upon, you know, and talk about change management is really where the value is. That there is value in data and there is value in data, data collaboration. And where we see it is there's value from the minds and to the partners. In the minds, there's decision making, system optimization, continuous improvement. This is what the mining organizations really see the value of this data. From that value that the mines get, your partners will also get the mining learnings, the essential partnerships, the solutions aligned. This allows the mining and uh, the partners to really understand how the systems are being leveraged in your application. The partners also have value to it. Their values are on benchmarking, understanding where the industry is going, making sure that the, the services and equipment that are providing you are up to par of what your new explorations are going to be. Also improving logistics, making sure the parts and services are there on time and optimized, and new product development. Mining is getting tougher. Conditions are getting more challenging, as we saw today this morning. So how do we understand what the next things we need as industry? And so that's where the lessons that we learn as partners will actually also help the mining industry with enhanced services. And so this allows us to deliver more pointed custom solutions, and not just selling one piece of equipment, but selling a package, a holistic solution, as we saw earlier this morning. And the keys to success around actual collaboration is first off, the people. The people uh, having that diverse group, having new perspectives across the industry. Next thing is around process. Process of delivery and developing those new insights. How are you actually going to deliver this, this stuff? And then technology. Technology is really going to transform the manual process and people to really make it repetitive. And so having the, really the correct balance will be key. Um, because if you don't really have that correct balance, your results can be very varying. And an example is like making a cake. You know, if you don't have the right ingredients and you put them in the wrong order or you put them in the wrong oven, you really don't think it doesn't really turn out. So you have to have that correct balance between the people, process, and technology. So let's explore this people element of the problem around um, collaboration. And undoubtedly, people is always the most challenging part of running an organization and tackling this collaboration problem. But what we also find is that it is the most critical part around challenging this, this, uh, this collaboration challenge. So what we find is really um, there is a, a need for uh, leadership to get behind this, this concept of, of collaboration and working at, as a team. How they communicate a common goal that the entire organization is willing to get behind, understands it well, and the value is well communicated. There's also a strong need for diversity. How can we leverage the strengths of all of the people across the organization, across the industry? These different people have different skill sets, and it's really important to be able to find the right balance. How do we put the right people in the right roles to really find this focus and deliver on those strengths? And then how do we empower our people? You know, how do we encourage feedback 
right down to the front line of the organization where people are really living and, and feeling the pain every day. How do we bring this feedback in? How do we encourage these ideas? How do we listen to these people? And then how do we incorporate this feedback back into it so that people have this sense of ownership and that they're involved? And also, we talked about this in the last session quite a bit. How do we leverage experience from the outside? How do we create this concept of a virtual organization where we're collaborating across the whole industry, even across other industries, across governing bodies, across um, educational bodies? So when we revisit our, uh, our cake analogy, if we have these different people with important skill sets, but they're not communicating, they're not given a good collaborative environment, then we can, um, this can lead to escalating costs, delivering poor results, and a very confused workforce. Now exploring the process. And when it comes to data, starting that first layer, that data integration. You know, data integration really doesn't mean it's centralization. It rather means democratization. Data, in, data is, think of it as your ingredients, your raw ingredients, your flour, your sugar, your eggs. That's the stuff by itself. It might taste OK, but it, not until you actually put it together will it actually do anything. And when I talk about democratization, it's making it available, making it at the supermarket, making it easy to, to get a hold of those things so that way people can just go and make information from it, make the next layer where they take that recipe and they put these ingredients together to really get the next layer of the cake. And when I look at information, information are your analysts, your, your reports, your, your analytics. Those are, those are the things that you have there. But you can notice that this triangle is still not complete. Just because you got the analytic done and the report done, it doesn't stop there because it's pretty useless until you can actually have action upon it. So you can make a cake, that's great, but unless you actually get it to the people who want it and need it, you know, that's really like the analytics is making sure you get it to the people how they want it, where they want it, when they want it, in time is really key around the action. But now even, even this, the next layer is what happens if that analytic isn't just right? You know, what happens if that cake flavor isn't just right? Well, you have to have that CI or continuous improvement loop to feed back the information that you learned from that action step all the way back down to the either data integration, adding new raw ingredients, or even actually to the information level where you're changing the reports and changing the analysis. So let's move on to the technology element. Now when, when we think of a problem and we look to the future, we have a tendency to straight away think of technology. You know, how can we use technology to solve this problem? And we're often driven by the technology. And we call this the shiny toy effect where we're thinking straight away about what is the latest and greatest in technology? How can we use it in the business without really thinking about what are the key problems that we're trying to solve? How are we putting our people and processes in place to support that and then considering the technology? So it's really important to se select a technology that is fit for purpose to solve the problems that we're trying to solve and solve them efficiently and consistently. It's very important to carefully organize data using technology based on how that data is used. If we come back to that analogy, you think of uh, storing those ingredients in a fridge. The preferred way to store those ingredients is looking at, well, how are we using these ingredients? Which ones are we using more often? And make those readily accessible. S and store that, that, those ingredients according to how they're used and making things easier within the process. We need to try to avoid uh, reinventing the wheel. You know, is something readily available off the shelf? And can we take this and then build off that to develop a technical solution, rather than going right back to square one every time and starting from scratch? It's also important to develop a test environment where we can actually explore our problems before we deliver a product out to the market. So how do we actually create this test environment and then use it as a feedback mechanism? How can we put uh, you know, samples in front of the customer. So you could think of this as like a test kitchen where we're developing these, these test cakes. We can create a sample area where the customers can come in and sample these cakes and decide which flavors they like. And then based on that, we can use that knowledge to then uh, develop those products um, that, that are really delivering the high value out to the customers. Now, to move from that test kitchen to a full production scale is really about that key balance, having that balance and scalability around people. You know, to feed the satisfy the hunger of 
organizations that are data hungry, you really have to have that role. Every person has a role, all the way down from the sous chef, all the way to the dishwasher. Everyone has a role along the organization. They're not a diverse set of people. The process. The process, don't collect data for the sake of collecting data. You know, everyone wants to do that, but you wouldn't really go to the grocery store, well, maybe some if you're hungry, uh, and just randomly pick up items and figure out later what I'm gonna make. Technology is really that automating that process. So once you start seeing people doing mundane tasks, things that are repetitive, you really need to look at how do we automate that and then leverage technology on top of that to free those people up to make those complex decisions and not do the mundane tasks. And lastly, staying relevant. You know, analysis that's been done today doesn't mean it's still valuable tomorrow. You know, that's what we talked about earlier about how fast can we iterate, being fast, being quick and agile. You know, something you do now, you have to have that continuous improvement loop to really make sure that are you still hitting the mark with that cake flavor today. So we know that this collaboration problem is not unique. Let's talk a little bit about what Komatsu as an organization is doing to try to tackle this collaboration problem in the industry. So Komatsu has a, a newly formed data solutions team, which is really aiming to tackle this problem in the, uh, in the data solution space. And what we've recognized is that there is a lot of strengths across the organization. Um, there's you know, a lot of strengths in terms of um, being able to uh, solve these problems when we bring things together. But how do we go about bringing all of these things together? Now, in this data solution space, it kind of takes focus in three key areas around continuous improvement. So how are we getting that focus right out to our customers? How are we living and breathing the problems that our customers are having and putting ourselves in customers' shoes so we can really understand those problems? Then how does that information flow back up to our product management where we can develop those into requirements? We can prioritize those requirements around how are we going to deliver the most value and gather feedback from our customers? And then finally, around the technology development. So how are we ensuring that our technical teams have a good understanding of these requirements and that they're developing solutions that are fit for purpose around meeting those requirements? So this is really about combining the strengths of the organization around looking at the OEMs, the manufacturers that really understand and are the experts for the equipment. You know, they, know, they understand the design of the equipment, the failure modes that these this equipment units are experiencing, and how can we leverage this experience and information to close the loop back into improvements in the design of the equipment? And how can we deliver these improvements right out to our customers? Also across the, uh, the OTMs, or the technology providers within the Komatsu organization. So we have modular and mindware, mindware that can provide all makes solutions um, which are able to combine this information across the entire operation and develop a better understanding of how we can optimize and improve the entire mining operation. So this is really how we're bringing things together. And now once you bring these things together and these teams, you really have to have a key goal in mind. You have to have something that is um, attainable, but yet far enough out there. And you know, for back to our cake analogy, you're gonna start off saying, you know, I wanna make the best cakes in the world, I wanna have a big factory, I wanna have X amount of things. That, those high obtainable goals are really what you're going to have to set your teams up for to really have them reach out for the success. And so once you have these clear aspirational goals you know, and that strategy and that change man management in place, it's really about aligning those stakeholders, getting that buy-in, breaking down those silos, reducing the duplicate work, and of course being agile, like we talk about the iterative process. So what are the goal, some of the key goals within the Komatsu organization? in this collaborative space for data solutions. We tend to look at these in uh, two different areas, and the first being edge computing. Now this is really down to the front line of the organization, you know, changing the way that mining is done. So really here we look at, well, what do we have running out there that's close to the customer? And we have all of these different you know, technology, uh, machines, onboard systems. How can we create a communication layer where all of these systems are talking the same language, can easily understand each other, and easily share information and open this up so that we can easily get the information we need to the right places and in the right time. So this is really around improving the people who work on the front line, improving the operator experience. You know, how well am I performing? How am I treating the equipment? 
improving the maintainer experience. You know, what is the key information I need to perform the tasks that I have to perform in the field? The second area is around the cloud computing side. And when we look at this, we, it's really around how we enhance the way we look at mining. So this is really being able to create that exploration environment. You know, how can we leverage this big data that we're collecting holistically uh, to actually start to build on our solutions, open up to create a more collaborative, explorative environment that we can bring in different experts from different areas and even our customers to be involved in the process of developing these solutions. So this is really around how do we bring all of these things together across a unified platform and how do we build this knowledge base in the industry where we better understand our equipment, we're better closing the feedback loop into the design of the equipment and we're understanding the benchmarking across the organization and across the industry. Um, customers want to know, you know how am I performing um, according to the, the rest of the industry and this is very important information to be able to share. So when we look at this in terms of the overall ecosystem that this creates, we talked about uh, our three key elements and when we look at the people, it's around bringing these key people together and sharing those insights. So in the edge side, you know, how are we delivering this information right out to the edge in the form of feedback to our operators in terms of the information they need to improve their performance? How are we delivering this out to the maintenance personnel in the field through the, the technology? And how are we bringing in the domain experts that can leverage data science and also the domain expertise on the equipment, uh, on environmental related information, on mining into this process? And really the processes that connect all of this together. So how can we ensure that we have the flow effect back down to the front line of the operation that these people who really need the information are getting the information they need. And so really to sum up, you know, around the key results that we're trying to achieve with this collaborative approach, we want to build trust. So what is that really about? It's about being open. You know, what are we actually doing with this data? How are we keeping you involved in the process of using this data? so that from a customer perspective, the data is not disappearing off into a black hole and then later you're told to do something. You're actually involved. Collaboration is, is important and it's important collab uh, cultural change for the organization that has to be embraced across the entire industry for this to really work and have its maximum effect. And it's important to understand that with collaboration, you get out what you put in. So the more you collaborate, the better you become at collaborating. And that's where we can really build some momentum. It creates this flywheel effect where we open up this collaborative approach, um, maybe not only within the industry, but outside across other industries. And finally, when we're able to really use this data and convert that data into tr value, this is where we can truly have our cake and eat it too. So, before we move on to questions, you might be wondering why we're we talking about cake so much. So we have uh, a little bit of a, a sweet surprise for you after questions. Um, but before that, let's, uh, let's move on and, and take some questions. Question, Mike? No. Hi, thank you very much, uh, very interesting. So my question to Komatsu, in, as you point, as you describe this Komatsu world is, first of all, I put my business hat on, I go, hmm, now what happens if I own Komatsu, Hitachi and Caterpillar? Do I have to belong to three worlds and how do I manage that? The second thing is, who owns the data here on those trucks? And are you going to be streaming that data to the asset owner, should they wish to it as well, or is it only a service product? Yeah, so who owns the data is always a very uh, interesting conversation. And, and Komatsu's stance is that the customer, the, per, the owner of the equipment, owns the data. Um, and, and as the OEM and, and the provider, we want to be able to facilitate that data to you with enriched information, with engineering knowledge, which are those different things, so we can make sure that our equipment are operating the best in your, in your operations. So we work with a lot of our partners right now, and 
um, work on organizing it, because there's a lot of different data sources, a lot of different machines coming off of them, and then leveraging our OTM technologies like Modular and Mindware, which are agnostic, which doesn't have to be just Komatsu. It can be Hitachi, Caterpillar, all those different types of equipment that it also gets that data, that you have a single stream, a portal, um, where your business units can actually leverage and pull that data. But we, our, our view is the customer owns the data. And what, what about that data being semantically interoperable? Very important word there. Semantically interoperable with the other, with the customer's systems. Yeah, so when you talk about like interoperability with the data into the customer systems, that's where we were close with the IT and the partnership. Because every single customer has their own way of how do they want to ingest the data, how do they want to use the data, whether they want it in their cloud or they want it local on-prem. So that's where we really focus on uh, those partnerships to understand what is the best way. And it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of how do you, what's the best way for that customer to right, get the... so you've got me to the point I wanted you to get to, which is oh boy. you need a Swiss Army knife yep. to deal with every customer. Yes. Because there is no semantically interoperable standards across the, across the industry. I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's really important to, to recognize that, uh, you know, <laughs> customers have their own existing business systems and they don't want to have to pull it out and change things every time there's a new development. So part of that collaborative approach is being collaborative in terms of that interoperability of the technology. So customers have their existing ERP systems running. Um, they have planning systems, all of these different systems where we want to be able to be more open about how these systems are integrated. We can open up the information flows um, bi-directionally between these different systems because really that helps to open up that whole collaborative world. Yeah, and that's where Kamatsu sees like the, we see value in information to provide a better equipment and better service to you. And then that's where you see those information to, you know more about your operations. So how do you bring that holistic stuff together? Uh, there's a question back there. G'day guys, uh, my name's Brent, I'm from MineArc Systems. I'm fairly new to the sector. I've come out of big data and analytics in uh, smart cities and mark tech. And uh, what typically always comes out around interoperability is that yes, you've got all these things that are able to talk to each other, but on the flip side of that, what are you guys doing around security and encryption to ensure that, that data is secure? I think, again, this, this can come back to collaboration. So there's there is a lot of expertise in terms of uh, cybersecurity that is available, and this is something that uh, you know, Komatsu really leverages partnerships with some of those major IT organizations that can s assist with cybersecurity. We understand that this is not a small problem and not something that we can solve on our own, so you know, we need to understand what are other industries doing in this cybersecurity space and make sure that when we're building this, these solutions and these technology approaches that uh, that cybersecurity is taken into account from the ground up. And it's not a feature of the system, it is something that is an integral part of everything that we do. Yeah, when it comes to security, you know, like the GDPR, you know, like the big thing, you know, I, I actually see that as a good thing. I see that as a thing that will enable uh, more collaboration because people understand what is the data being used for? What is this information being used for? How is it being stored? Because it's in the regulation of how you have to follow it. So those types of things will actually help the industry be more collaborative when it comes to this data and security of it. Any other questions? One more here. One more. Thank you. Uh, Mark Dwyer from MMG. Uh, question was, I guess, how do you position the service offering around analytics and um, continuous improvement uh, that you offer, along with the internal capabilities that we might have or the third parties who offer that kind of service across uh, multiple aspects of the value chain? Yes. So I think, you know, again, it's, it's really um, related back to how you can be more open and collaborate um, with those third parties. So um, I think, um, you know, when you look at all of these different technologies that um, a customer is using um, or could put in place. We need to kind of understand, you know, where is the real value in all of these systems and then how do we create the right face uh, to the organization around delivery of that information. So um, really I think, you know, what we need to understand is, is you know, um, the whole kind of uh, ecosystem um, of, you know, the value that, that we're trying to deliver back to the organization 
and then find those right connections between all of these different systems. Yeah, and I think when it comes to the services that we offer, you know, we, we do even put some of our resources. We embed some resources with our customers, you know, and actually they have the knowledge of our systems and work closely with our customers. So we do actually have programs where we embed resources and services across to uh, have that better communication and collaboration to almost break down those silos. All right, well, thank you very much. And as you can see in the back, um, there are some cupcakes. <laughs>